my fellow workers in government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, as I was listening to the young lady, and she is a lady, uh, I could not help but shed a tear to think, to try, to have to relive the suffering that she went through and to think how many other children are even as we here sit in this fancy hotel room eating our fancy food continuing to suffer the same fate as she has and accompanying those tears that I just shed was a deep sense of shame because we have not done enough for the Philippines to now be considered the epicenter of, uh, let us not shorten it into a, a, a clinical term, OSAEC. It is sexual abuse and exploitation of children. And I leave it to your imagination. And I would imagine in some cases your imagination cannot even begin to fathom what is done to these poor children, to our poor children. And so we must do more. We must do more. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency, Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos, Jr. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Secretary of uh, Interior and Local Government, uh, Secretary Ben Hur Abelos. Please, uh, please be seated. Uh, the esteemed members of the Diplomatic Corps, the International Justice Mission or, uh, or IGM Chief Program Officer, Mr. Blair Burns, the IJ, IJM Vice President, Attorney Samson Innocencio the officials and the members of IJM, my fellow workers in government, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, as I was listening to the young lady, and she is a lady, uh, I could not help but shed a tear to think to try to have to relive the suffering that she went through and to think how many other children are even as we here sit in this fancy hotel room eating our fancy food continuing to suffer the same fate as she has and accompanying those tears that I just shed with a deep sense of shame because we have not done enough for the Philippines to now be considered the epicenter of, uh, let us not shorten it into a, a, a clinical term, OSAEC. It is sexual abuse and exploitation of children. And I leave it to your imagination. And I would imagine in some cases your imagination cannot even begin to fathom what is done to these poor children, to our poor children. And so we must do more. We must do more. The Filipino culture, the, one of the most important part of the Filipino culture is family. We are known around the world for that. We are so well known for it that we are, Filipinos are the number one, are the number one caretakers of foreign children all around the world. I go uh, and travel and meet important leaders all around the world. And they say, and I'm talking about kings and queens and presidents and prime ministers 
And they say to me, I was raised by a Filipina. My second mother is a Filipina. And that's what we Filipinos are. We love our families. We adore our children. And for us to allow this to happen in our country brings to me an overwhelming sense of shame because being in government, being in public service, we are not doing enough. We must do more. However, I am happy that we have now, the, together with the Interagency Council Against Trafficking and the Department of the Interior and Local Government, that we have had now this uh, conference and uh, the IJM has organized this very important event. We are here today to confront one of the greatest challenges of our time. The challenges that we face in government are always the challenges that are brought to us by the future. And what exemplifies our future more? What symbolizes our future more than our children? And that is why this strikes at the very heart of our society. It undermines the foundations of what we are, of who we are as a people. In every community that is alive with the laughter and the chatter of children, there is a dark reality where half a million Filipinos, one in every 100 Filipinos has been victimized. It is an appalling statistic. We cannot allow this to continue. We will not allow it to continue. This is a horrible, horrible scourge of online sexual abuse or exploitation of children or osaki which remains widespread now in our country. It's not a distant problem. All the, all the victims just faceless and nameless children. Perhaps we do not know them. Perhaps we do not, uh, we're not related to them. But they are all our children. They are Filipinos. We do not even have to go through the exercise of trying to imagine, oh, what, what would I feel if it happened to our children? Doesn't matter, just look at the child. Think of any child, any child. They live within our midst and several, maybe the sons, daughters of those people we know. Their smiles, their brave smiles, innocent smiles, conceal the pain that is our nation's shame as a sad reality is that many perpetrators are the victims, families, or relatives, the very people that we expect to care for them. And as this is a battle that we must not lose, and we will not lose, this administration created the Presidential Office for Child Protection, or POCP, which is a critical step in our fight against this crisis. The POCP will serve as the epicenter of our efforts, bringing together resources and strategies to ensure that every child in our country is protected and supported. On the legislative side, such as the anti osaic and Anti-CSAEM Act, as well as the Expanded Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2022, also underscore our relentless pursuit to bring these perpetrators to justice. Furthermore, our Tier 1 status in the, sta the Trafficking in Persons report shows that we as a country have made earnest efforts and, leaderships in con and leadership in combating the crimes of human trafficking and OSAI. We have also set the global example of effective law enforcement, collaborating with Philippine Internet Crimes Against Children, or the PICA. The Philippine National Police Women and Children Protection Center reported that it has rescued more than 1,099 victims of trafficking in persons and OSAIC and arrested more than 100 suspects from 2022 to July of 2024. This might give us some satisfaction. If that is how many of how many that we have apprehended, if that is the number of the children that we have saved, I cannot help but thinking how many are still left out there. That is a minority. That is not the majority of the victims. That is not the majority of these perpetrators. That is the minority. And we need to do more. 
It serves as a testament that this administration has an unwavering dedication to ending this kind of abuse. Be assured, we are fully committed to ensuring and protecting our children, who are the most vulnerable members of our society. It's our, it is our utmost priority to protect the, our innocence. The innocence, perfect little beings who are being hurt for money by the people that they trust. So to everyone here, this, is a, this summit is a significant waypoint. A moment to reflect on our progress and renew our commitment to eradicating OSAI. To our international partners, we extend our gratitude for your aid, in, for your aid to us in continuing this fight. Your support has been valuable in our mission to save children, rescue victims, and give them a chance to start over. As we move forward, let us reflect on our roles in these critical battles. To the DSWD, the DOH, DOJ, DEPA, DILG, let us stand firmly by our sworn duty to protect the innocent children who have no power to defend themselves and have only us to look to, to do that for them. Continue to develop training programs, ensure that our law enforcement, the prosecution, social workers, teachers, other public servants are well equipped to handle these cases. Strengthen our criminal justice system to the, to, to end, to the end that all who perpetrate this abhorrent crime are put behind bars and made to pay for what they have done. And everyone should think not only twice, but three, but four, five, 10, 100 times before committing this abuse again. I have said it before, I will say it again. This administration will do everything. It will, we will spare no effort to combat these heinous crimes against our children. The LGUs have a unique position as they are positioned to foster an environment where child abuse is not tolerated. Leverage your knowledge and experience to ensure that no child falls victim to OSAIC. With the launching of Report OSAIC, we hashtag Report OSAIC, we are hopeful that this will help increase community awareness of what OSAIC is, how we can prevent it, how we can help those who are suffering from these abuses, and the legal consequences from committing what we consider as the worst crime against humanity. To our communities, this administration implores you to be suspicious, be watchful, and report even the slightest inkling of abuse. I, I reiterate my message in the State of the Nation Address. Let us not turn a blind eye to wrongdoings because passivity enables evil to perpetuate. One call to the Makabata Helpline, 1383, can save one child. Let us all make the Philippines the absolute worst place for those who abuse and exploit children. To our victims and survivors, your stories to continue to push us in the right direction. Your extraordinary courage motivates us to do better. Look at that, this young lady, what she has made of, her, of herself, besides all the evil that has been perpetrated to her and the people around her. And yet she has made something of herself. And this is what we destroy when we allow these exploiters to continue with doing what they are doing. That is what we destroy. We destroy that hope, that possibility, that life that is God-given and should not be taken away by anyone but God himself. We cannot even begin to imagine the horrors that they faced. It's not their burden to carry alone. The entire government is with you. We hold your hand and walk along the arduous path towards healing and recovery. As, I, as we were discussing many of the measures that we were trying to put into place, I reminded all the heads of the different agencies what we are trying to do here, what is the most important part of this work that we are trying to do here, is to save the child, save that life. 
that should be always our primary consideration because life when taken away can no, never be returned and for whatever we do a part of that child's life has already been permanently taken away perhaps we can offer another another option another form another chance at a good life and that's what we have to always remember this is not about crime this is not about money this is not about exploitation it is about preserving and saving and uh, making sure that our future is bright our children are our future let us save them let us keep them safe let us keep them healthy let us keep them strong because that way we keep our future safe and healthy and strong it is that existential in its importance we are resolute in our commitment to provide services that will help move that will help move the victims forward such as therapy reintegration to DSWD and its partners including of course the IJM let us build a world where justice and compassion prevail and every child's safety and dignity are upheld dahil sa bagong Pilipinas inaaruga at pinoprotektahan natin ang ating mga anak Ang ba sa bagong Pilipinas, binibigyan natin ng pag-asa ang mga biktima. Sa bagong Pilipinas, sin sinisigurado natin na may mananagot sa mga nagsasala. Sama-sama po natin, tapusin ang usay. Maraming salamat at mabuhay po kayo na. Alam niyo po, patulog na ako nung nakita ko po itong uh, balita na si PBBM po ay napaiyak. Uh, napaiyak po sa isang uh, speech niya patungkol nga daw po dyan sa USAIC. At uh, agad ko itong uh, hinanap kung ano yung video na yun. At doon ko nakita yung... disappointment uh, yung frustrations ni PBBM na hindi po napapangalagaan ng maayos ang ating mga kabataan yung mga nagdaang ano po mga nagdaang administrasyon hindi po nila ito nagawa eh uh, hindi nila na solusyunan ang problema sa ganitong uh, kinakaharap na problema ng ating mga kabataan dulot po ng unang-una kahirapan at uh, pangalawa eh sa parte po ng mga magulang ah, eh dahil nga din po sa kahirapan eh nagagawa yung mga ganitong kalakaran alam po natin na nitong mga nakaraang araw Mainit na usapin po ang patungkol dito sa ating mga kababayan na kabataan na inaabuso. So yung katulad po nitong si Kibuloy at nitong si Mohika na nahuli pa doon po sa Dubai. Ito po isang malaking ano to eh. Malaking uh, milestone para sa ating mga Pilipino na... Sa panahon ngayon ni PBBM, nahuhuli po yung mga gumagawa ng krimen laban sa mga kabataan. Swerte natin. Sa totoo lang, ang swerte natin ha? sa panahon ngayon. Dahil may kumikilos po para po mapigilan ang ganitong mga paglabag sa karapatan ng mga kabataan. Pang-aabuso. Hindi po natin ito nakita sa mga nagdaang administrasyon. Kay Pinoy, kay GMA, kay ERAP, at lalong-lalo na dito kay Digong. Lumala pa nga nung panahon ni Digong. Kasi panahon ni Digong, nakasuhan ng rape. child abuse ang kanyang spiritual advisor 
tinutukan ni Digong ang mga sinasabing drug lords, drug pusher, drug addict na ah, ayon sa ating mga napapanood de eh, nabalita nilikida lang, kinalaban lang dahil para ang mag pursue o kumbaga ang uh, kumbaga eh makapagbenta ng malaya ay etong kanyang mga kaalyadong Chinese drug lords. Never nating nakita si Digong na nakipaglaban para sa pornograpiya ng mga kabataan, ng mga bata. Diba? Alam niyo po, ngayon, sa ating Pangulong Bongbong Marcos, alam natin, sa pang ating mga kabataan, sa pang ating mga anak sa mga darating na panahon dahil ang mga katulad nitong halimaw na si Kibulok at etong si Mohika, ay hindi na po sila makakagawa ng mga ganitong krimen. Kita nyo kay Mohika, walang nagpipipol power. Diba? Walang nagpipipol power para sa kanya. Walang nagwawala nung nahuli siya sa, sa Dubai na mga tao sa kalsada. Walang nananawagan ng pagbaba ni PBBM sa pwesto. Bakit? Si Mohika mahirap lang. Si Mohika walang, re, walang uh, tinayong relihiyon o walang tinayong kulto. Kita nyo pagkakaiba dito kay Kibulo. Ah, na mas masahul pa ang ginawa sa mga kabataan. May kaso ding rape itong si Mohika. Ah, pero mas malala ang kaso nitong si Kibulo. Human trafficking. Sex trafficking by force. Sa Amerika, sa Pilipinas, iisa ang kanya mga kaso. Parehas na parehas. Kaya hindi na tayo magtaka kung lumala ang ganitong krimen laban sa mga kabataan. Nung panahon ni Digong, bakit? E ultibo nga ang kanyang spiritual advisor na kasuhan po ng ganitong uh, pambababoy. Imagine niyo po yun. Spiritual advisor ka ng Pangulo na kasuhan ka ng child abuse at rape. Tapos ibinasura ng double court. Ari mari mari po. Para sa mga katulad na natin, halos lahat naman ng Pilipino may anak. May pamangkin, may apo. Di ba? May inaanak. Kaya nga po nagtataka ko eh. Nung mga nakarang araw, bakit may nagtatanggol? Bakit may nagpoprotekta? Bakit? Merong mga tao na sumusuporta sa ganitong ripis, manyakis. Sus Mariusa. Sana hindi po maranasan nitong mga taong nagtatanggol na ito. Ang naranasan ng mga biktima nitong si Kibulok at nitong si Mohikang Ogag. Mohikang uh, nakakagigil. Mohikang perwisyo sa buhay. Demonyo. Mga kampo ni Satanas. Itong dalawang to. So ngayon po ito po yung video presentation po ng uh, ng ano ng Osaic ngayon pong 2024. Tapos speech po ni SILG uh, Benhar Abalos. Sana po mapanood niyo nang buo kasi po importante po ito para po maprotekta ng ating mga kabataan. Ang pinaglalaban po dito ng ating gobyerno ay ang kabataan. Ang pinaglalaban po dito ni PBBM, ng DILG, PNP at ng lahat ng sanay ng gobyerno. Ang ating kabataan na pag-asa ng bayan na hindi pinrotektahan ng mga nakarang administrasyon. At kahit yung ating uh, DepEd Secretary nitong nakaraang mga panahon, 
hindi po pinrotektahan ng mga kabataan. Bagkus ang pinrotektahan ay ang isang manyakol na umaabuso sa mga kabataan. Ewan ba natin, ba't ganyan, may ganyan mga tao? Ito na po yung video. Sana po mapanood po ninyo ng buo. Maraming salamat po. Maging nakakabahala para sa mga manonood. Sa bayan namin, ang mga bata ay sinisigurado namin ligtas. Sila ay inaalagaan, pinoprotektahan, at binabantayan. Ang mga anak ko ay parang anak na rin nila. Ang mga anak nila ay parang anak ko rin. At habang naririto ako, ipinapangako kong walang masamang mangyayari sa kanila. Bilang isang komunidad, iisa ang aming responsibilidad. Kaya naman, nagtutulungan kami at sama-samang pinoprotektahan ang bawat bata sa aming bayan. Pero teka, bakit may parang kakaiba? Napasok ba ng usae ang barangay natin? Di pwede yan. Di dapat palampasin. Kahit duda pa lang, dapat i-report agad natin. Di tayo papayag na madagdagan pa ang mga biktima. Gagawin natin ang lahat para matiyak na ni isa sa ating mga anak walang mapapahamak. Sa taong 2022, isa sa isang daan batang Pilipino ay biktima ng pangaabuso para lumikha at magbenta ng child sexual exploitation material. Madalas itong pinatawag na show, chat chat, cyber sex o child porn. Mga tawag na hindi akma sa totoong madadanap na pangaabuso sa bata. Dahil ang totoong tawag dito ay online sexual abuse o exploitation of children o OSAEC. Ang pangaabusong ito ay nagdudulot ng matinding trauma sa mga batang biktima. Walang lugar dapat ang krimeng ito sa bansa natin. Kaya't samahan nyo kami at pagtulungan natin wakasan ito. Di dapat ito usaping pampamilya lang. Dahil ang labang ito ay para sa kinabukasan ng ating lipunan. Kahit pinakamaliit na sinyalis lang ang makita, i-report agad. Maaaring mga batang nagkukumpulan sa isang bahay, doble-dobling koneksyon ng internet, pamilyang dati walang-wala, biglang magarbo ang pamumuhay, o pagbabago sa kilos ng bata, gaya ng pagiging balisa. Pagkakaroon ng takot sa ibang tao, laging natutulog, o maging ang pagkakaroon ng pasa, o sugat na hindi maipaliwanag. Importante ang bawat detalye, kaya huwag matakot magsalita. Kung may doda, i-report ka agad. Mga otoridad na ang bahala. Responsibilidad nating magsalita para sa kanila. Tayo ang boses ng isa't isa. Dito sa bayan namin, tahimik. Pero di kami tatahimik. Di kami titigil. Sama-sama, pagtutulungan namin. Hanggang sa kahuli-hulihang bakas ng karahasan, tatanggalin at lilinisin namin. Sama-sama nating wawakasan ng usae hanggang sa kahit pinakamaliit na bahid, siguradong wala sa bayan namin. Ganito sa bayan namin. Sana sa inyo rin. Bayan mo ng bahid ng usaek para sa isang bansam ligtas sa usaek. Iisang nasyon, iisang aksyon. Kung may tahinahinalang kaso ng usaek sa inyong lugar, Magsumbong po tumawag sa lokal na otoridad. Thank you, Attorney Sampson. At this point, may we call on Secretary Benjamin Abalos Jr. of the Department of Interior and Local Government for his message. Of course, to our President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., to Attorney Innocencio, Mr. Blair Burns of IJM, members of the IACAT, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to everyone. We are gathered here today not just as public servant, but as protectors of our nation's future, and this is our children. The fight against online sexual abuse and exploitation of children is a fight for the children's safety innocence, and the right to live free from fear. In a sectoral meeting in Manacanyang regarding OSAEC, 
no less than our president, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said that the most heinous and evil of all crimes are crimes committed against children, specifically sexual exploitation. And during this meeting, he ordered all of those present to immediately crack down on Osaic. This is our president ang nagtatanggol sa ating kinabukasan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, last May 13, 2024, the Philippines participated in the 33rd Conference of the Commission on Criminal Prevention and Criminal Justice in Vienna. In one of the side events, it was the first time that I heard that the Philippines is considered to be the epicenter of online child pornography per accounts of an international non-government organization. Sa totoo lang, bilang isang Pilipino, napakasakit pakinggan po nito. That is why our call to action, and I've told them that we will protect our children, that is the call of our president, and that is, of course, everyone's call to action. Lahat po tayo. But then, I stated in that summit that we are the victims. We will do something about this. But it is time that other countries must penalize the end consumers, those who watch the videos. Each and every country should pass this law, penalizing the end consumers. My dear friends, based on DILG's VAUSI data, from January to June 24, there had been a total of 22,421 children who have experienced physical, sexual, emotional, and psychological abuse, neglect, and other types of development of uh, violence. On the side of the PNP, they conducted a total of 94 OSAIC operations from January to September 2024, which resulted in the rescue of 169 victims, the arrest of 51 suspects, and the filing of 60 cases. My dear friends, in the side of the ALG, we have this memorandum that we gave to all local government units. Number one, they should adopt local ordinance against OSAIC and CISEP. This is mandatory. Number two, they should monitor percentage of LGU and staff social service workforce who are trained to implement special child protection laws, including OSAIC and CISEP. Number three, monitor the number of reports made by LSWDO to a report of a suspected or alleged OSAIC same incidents are made. Number four, include RA 11930 in the local government court for children and include in the menu of PPAs the advocacy initiatives including celebrating the second Tuesday of February every year as safer internet day for children. These are just some of the memorandums that we have made. And perhaps, in ending, just let me tell you this. I came from Dubai after Alice Goo, after Pastor Kiboloy. But for me, ang pinaka masakit sa lahat at talagang tinamaan ako was this trip to Dubai. What is this? This is the arrest of a certain Teddy J. Mojica. This person has victimized 111 young children. The youngest is 9 years old, and the oldest is about 15, a median age, median age of 13 years. What is this? How does he do things? He will offer 500 pesos to young students to give their pictures. And he will first profile them. Loners, achievers, who have no friends, and then once profiling them, 
offer 500 just to give a uniform pictures and then after a while he will blackmail the children he will place the face of the children with the naked body and so the children will protest and this predator will say that look I'm going to post this picture if we're not going to continue until he controls them and not only that the worst is there are children that he will tell them to go to a certain place and these young children will be raped and while being raped it's being videotaped and he will sell this in the dark web and again he will tell the children you should do this otherwise we will be posting this 111 children and I would like to thank is she's now here General Portia Manalad and the entire Children's and Welfare <laughs> Marami Salamat Portia she was the one who was able to trace this in the internet and when she told me I called up Hamad my friend from the Interpol in Singapore and then we had the meeting with Lieutenant General Dana of the UAE and Dana reported it to Sheikh Saif Al Nayan was the Minister of the Interior also a good friend and they were able to track this sexual predator and three days ago we went to Dubai and brought Chod Mohika here to the Philippines to face justice Masakit man ito, tanggapin na lang natin ang nangyari na ito, pero ang importante, not during our time. We will do something about this through the guidance of our president. That is why I would like to thank all of you who are here. Uh, let's protect our children. Tama kayo, iisang nasyon, iisang aksyon, subuin ang osaik. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat.